Hey guys, it's Autumn Guard. If you're struggling with chord progressions, this video is gonna be vital for you. Today we're gonna talk about a plugin called Scalar 2, which is kind of like a music theory cheat code. I'm gonna go over some of my favorite features, all of which I know will be super helpful to you guys. And then towards the end, I will make a beat with this, just so you guys could see how it affects workflow. You're in for a treat, that's all I gotta say. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here it is, the Scalar 2 plugin. The interface itself looks quite nice and easy to navigate. The first thing I wanna show you guys is the scales. So if you go right over here, you can see that they have all of these scales that you can use in your music. If you wanna play the Hungarian minor scale, you can do that. Or play the C major scale. You can also decide on what chords you want based on the vibe that you want the beat to be. So if you want something that sounds sad, you just go over here and this is serious, sad, emotional, sentimental. You can also decide how big you want the chords to be. So if you go down here, these are just triads, but you can turn them into sevenths, ninths, even elevenths and thirteenths. You can also choose different voicings. And you can also have different variations. Let's go for leading tone. You can also mess with the octaves. So let's see, let's go, let's go up. If I would have had this when I was like maybe 20, I'd probably be a billionaire by now. <laughs> Another thing that's really cool is that if you go into songs right here, you can also choose chord progressions based on the genre that you want to make music in. So let's just play with future bass one. I'm gonna go down a couple octaves. I love it, this is awesome. Future bass six. They've got pop, progressive, R&B, rock. They've got everything, you guys. Even K-pop, nice. <laughs> you can also choose by artist. Shout out to Curtis King. He's actually how I found out about this plugin. Let's go ahead and check out some of the chords that he's made. Ooh. So yes, you can choose whichever artist from here and then choose the progressions that they've come up with and kind of just make your own thing with it. You can also import some other chord sets, which is pretty cool. Okay, this next feature is probably my favorite feature and that's the audio and MIDI detect feature. So let's say you have a melody that you're working with and you don't know what key it's in. You just grab it, drag it, and uh, hit yes to continue. And boom, it tells you exactly what scale that melody's in. Um, let's go ahead and play that melody really quick. Okay, so I dragged this in there. It detected the audio perfectly. It says it's in B. If we look at the sample, we can confirm that it is in B. So this is pretty accurate. And it automatically came up with some chords that you can play along with it. I've just been having so much fun creating chord progressions from voice memos of like melodies and acapellas that I had for like forever. <laughs> it also detects MIDI as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click detect. Click the record button and then start playing your MIDI. And as you can see, it detected the chords perfectly. And again, what's really cool is that you're not limited to those chords, you can change them up. So even if you just have simple triads for a MIDI chord progression, you can always tweak your chords and build them up with this, as I showed you earlier with the triads, voicings, variations, modulations, and there's a ton more stuff, you guys. There's a humanizing feature, which makes the piano sound more human with velocity, timing, both, quantizing, swing. There's honestly a lot of really cool stuff to explore here, but I just wanted to show you guys some of the features that I've been using the most. Okay, so now let's get into how I use Scalar 2 to begin a new track. Okay, so really quick, I wanna show you guys what this looks like for when I'm actually working on a song. So the first thing that I'm gonna do right now is go to 
Synthwave. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the Dorian scale. It's supposed to be a jazzy, bluesy, rocky, sophisticated type style. So let's just see what that sounds like. Okay, so I'm gonna go with G. So now that I've got these oof, where I want them, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and hit MIDI capture. And now it's recording the MIDI chords. Click stop. And then you're gonna go ahead and drag the MIDI to a clip. So this is a good starting point for me. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of like play with this a little bit. As I'm forwarding through this, I just want to say that this is really great for beat block. It's really awesome to have somebody to start off with and then tweak from there instead of feeling like you have to start from a blank page. Yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. This is pretty freaking amazing for beat block. <laughs> okay, so now it's on Addictive Keys and Mark 1, and this is how I've tweaked the chord so far. We're getting there. Also just froze and flattened the audio of that chord progression. And I came up with these chops. <laughs> All this with Scalar is my starting point, not bad. Because I already know that the chord progression is in the G Dorian mode, coming up with the melody for it was really easy. I just went back and referenced the notes in that scale. Okay, so this is what we've come up with. that I got from Scalar, turned the MIDI into audio, reversed it, chopped it up, and was able to flip it and just make it my own. So I can't stress enough, if you're struggling with creating chord progressions, definitely give Scalar 2 a try. Most likely you're gonna love it. <laughs> this thing is like catnip, but for music producers. Did you know that hitting the like, sub, and bell button makes you a better music producer? It's science, bro. So go ahead and do that, and I will see you guys on the next one.